Hello everyone, welcome to another video. This is the solution of another problem of classical mechanics by Goldstein. I'm Professor Ricardo and in this problem we are going to suppose that a system of two particles is known to obey the equations of motion 122 and 126, which are these two equations here. So we're going to suppose that this system of two particles is known to obey these two equations. And from the equations of motion of the individual particles, from the equations of motion of the individual particles, show that the internal forces between particles satisfy both the weak and the strong laws of action and reaction. So, uh, from the equations of motion of the individual particles, we are going to show that the internal forces uh, satisfy both the weak and the strong laws of action and reaction. First, consider the position of the center of mass, R, and for the system of two particles, we have that the mass multiplied by the vector R is equal to the summation of mi r i which in our case is m1 r1 plus m2 r2. So the equations of motion of the individual particles are for the particle 1, m1 multiplying the acceleration of particle 1, which is the second uh, order time derivative of r1. Uh, this is equal to the external force over particle 1 plus the internal force of particle 2 over particle 1. We have an equivalent equation for particle 2. m2 multiplying the acceleration of particle 2 is equal to the summation of all the, part of the, all the forces acting on particle 2, the external force and the internal force of particle 1 over particle 2. And we are going to sum these two equations. So, since the mass is a constant, we can write it inside the time derivative for both cases here. And the sum of time derivatives is equal to the derivative of a sum. So, we can write the, the left-hand side of this equation as the, the time derivative, second order time derivative, of m1 r1 plus m2 r2. And in the right hand side, we are going to write the external forces, f1 and f2, plus the internal forces, f12 and f21. Now, this quantity here inside the parentheses is equal to mr. So, we are going to write the left-hand side of the equation as the, 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 the time derivative of mr. And this quantity, the summation of the external forces over particle 1 and particle 2, is equal to the total external force, which is written here. Our system is known to obey this equation here, so this is a definition. The total external force is equal to the summation of uh, the individual external forces. So, the first term of the right-hand side is the total external force, and we are going to write these two internal forces here. And since the mass is a constant, we can write it outside the, the, the derivative and we just uh, obtained the left-hand side of this equation here. And we just repeat these three terms. But since our system must obey this equation, this pair of internal forces must be equal to zero. Why? Because mass multiplying 
the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to the total external force. And then this pair of internal forces added, are this is equal to zero. Or we can say that F21 is the negative of F12. And this is the third, the, 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 the weak law of action and reaction. This is exactly the weak law of action and reaction. Okay, so what about the strong law of action and reaction? The equation of motion for particle one is the time derivative of the momentum being equal to the, the forces exerted on particle one, the external force and the internal force. And if we multiply this equation by R1 in a cross product, so we have the R1 cross the time derivative of the momentum, R1 cross F1, external F1, plus the R1 cross F1 2. Okay, and we are going to use this identity. Consider this identity. The time derivative of this product, R and mv, which is the momentum. So r cross the momentum, mv. This is equal to the derivative of r, which is the velocity, cross mv, plus r cross the time derivative of the momentum, mv. But this first term is null. This is equal to zero, because we have a cross product between v and v, Okay, multiplied by a constant, but uh, this is a cross product between the same vector. So this is equal to zero. And then we have that this time derivative of this product is equal to this quantity here. And this quantity is exactly what we have here. R1 cross the time deriv derivative of the momentum. This is the momentum. So we're going to write this left-hand side as the time derivative of R cross the momentum of particle one. We are talking about particle one by now. And then we just repeat this right-hand side of the equation. But R1 cross P1 is the angular momentum for particle one. So we can write this equation as the time derivative of the angular momentum and R1 cross the external force over particle one, this is the torque from the external force on particle one. So uh, we are going to repeat this last term and obtain this equation here. We can write the same equation for particle two. Doing the same considerations, we can obtain this equation for particle two. The time derivative of the angular momentum for particle two is the total uh, is the is the torque, the external torque of over particle two plus this product R2 cross F21. And we are going to add these two equations. So in the left hand side of the equation we have the time derivative of L1 plus L2 and here we get the the external torque over particle one plus the external torque over particle two and these two terms R1 cross F12 plus R2 cross F21. Okay, so this quantity inside the parenthesis is the total on angular momentum. So we get the time derivative of the angular momentum. And the the summation of the external torque over the individual particles, one and two, is the total external torque. And then uh, we are going to consider the weak law of action and reaction that we just showed that this is true, that F12 plus F21 is equal to zero. Then F21 is the negative of F12. And then these two terms here, we, we can write them as R1 minus R2 
in a cross product with F12 because we wrote this F21 as the negative of F12. Okay, but since this system is known to obey these two equations here, this quantity must be equal to zero because we know that the time derivative of the angular momentum is equal to the external torque, the total external torque, then this quantity must be equal to zero. And then, since with this equation here, we concluded that uh, the weak law, th this is the weak law of action and reaction, the forces are uh, equal and opposite. Now, this equation here uh, is showing to us that the internal forces, in addition to being equal and opposite, also lie along the line joining the particles, because the product of the internal force with the line joining the particles, this is equal to zero, then they, they are in the same direction. With, and this is the strong law of action and reaction. Thank you.